Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope that you're all well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. Ethereum's dominance over the global market cap in the next five years will make it the new crypto king overtaking Bitcoin's place. This was said by someone by the name of Ian McLeod, McLeod that he said this to the financial news portal Market Watch. Ian McLeod is an analyst for Thomas Crown Art an art agency that relies on the Ethereum blockchain to protect against fraudulent activity in the art industry. For Mr. McLeod, Ethereum has bottomed, and its current value is an excellent investment opportunity since the increasing number of users of this blockchain will bring a necessary increase of its market cap to the point of making it universally adopted. Mr. McLeod's confidence in the development of Ethereum as a golden platform for business is so high that according to his opinion, Ethereum will be able to overtake Bitcoin within five years as its adoption increases. In an email to MarketWatch, Mr. McLeod expressed his optimism and bullish vision of the markets, especially regarding the use and adoption of Ethereum. He said, Not only do we think it will rebound considerably before the end of 2018, I believe that over the longer time it will significantly dent Bitcoin's dominance. In fact, I think we can expect Bitcoin to lose 50% of its cryptocurrency market share to Ethereum, its nearest rival within five years, end quote. Bitcoin has remained the most important cryptocurrency of the global market cap throughout the history of blockchain technologies. However, many analysts have agreed that every day there is a better chance that Ethereum will take the first position. The opinion has also been supported by financial analysts from Weiss Ratings. In recent statements, the Weiss Ratings team commented that thanks to its usefulness and flexibility, Ethereum has great opportunities to overcome it. They said in five years, we see Ethereum like platforms dominating the market, not necessarily Ethereum. Hard to predict which progr uh, program project dominates, but we feel usefulness and flexibility of Ethereum will be the standard. We apologize for not being clear. Our earlier tweet was a comment on an article below. This was two days ago. When it comes to usefulness and actual utility i will put it this way regardless if bitcoin is the number one coin or not other coins have already in some way surpassed it as far as technology wise and that's not me stepping on bitcoin or saying that bitcoin should not be the number one coin the fact is we know that tech wise that they have tried to implement smart contracts on top of bitcoin it does not work as well as the smart contracts on top of Ethereum. As far, even this, I mean, these, not that they're even like the quickest coins that we have in the entire market, but logically, you not even not in logically, mathematically, Ethereum is, I believe, two or three and a half times quicker than Bitcoin actually is. Uh, Lightning Network isn't expected to be fully implemented for another two years. As of now, it appears that we could be possibly maybe getting some type of update on Ethereum relatively soon. And even when it just comes to the robustness of the entire platform, as far as what is built on top of it, what can be built on top of it, this is what people mean. They don't mean uh, that they like the sound of Ethereum more than they like to hear uh, Bitcoin's name being mentioned. Is that when you think about the just the amount of apps and other things that are built on top of it that are not built on top of Bitcoin, if any at this point, uh, this is kind of what they mean. And logically, should e Ethereum has been where it is for quite some time. And this is why it gets a lot of the hype that it does. Uh, and the longer that it stays where it is, the longer this hype will continue on top of the platform. Should we see a future where Ethereum is actually properly scalable, which it is not right now. This is where everyone is getting these ideas from because when it comes to uh, people creating apps or dApps or uh, websites or Ethereum being its own world computer, which is the original intent of Ethereum, should this end up happening and we have millions of transactions per second on the Ethereum network, then logically uh, utility would probably beat out a store of value. Uh, it's interesting to note that someone, or rather a number of people, are now coming forward talking about the usefulness of Ethereum after the last couple of days, weeks, when we had people coming forward talking about how horrible Ethereum was, how slow Ethereum was. All of this technology isn't even at its peak right now. Crypto is still very new. Uh, we are still at the beginning stages of all of this. So within the next three to four years, everything, everything that we have, regardless of what coin that it is, Bitcoin or Ethereum, everything will be able to 
scale, rapid transactions, 100,000 transactions per second, 1 million, 10 million, all the numbers that people like to throw out. But it'll come down to actual utility. Is anyone using your blockchain? Is anyone using your coin? Is anyone actually using your platform? Are things being built on top of it? Are world governments, like they've been talking about building on top of Ethereum, are they actually building on top of it? Is there is there important data that's stored on top of the Ethereum blockchain that if it was lost would be detrimental to whoever has the information on top of it? This is kind of what makes uh, a project more expensive. Uh, projections that we've seen as far as Ethereum overtaking Bitcoin have ranged anywhere from two years to now we have around five years. I guess we will look back on this and see if this is, or rather how true that this is, because a lot of people are constantly talking about this. And at some point we will have a clear uh, leader or, you know, it'll be more evident as to who has taken over who or who cannot be replaced by what, if that makes any sense. Next up, Litecoin is once again in the news. The Litecoin core team recently rolled out an emergency update that fixes a denial of service or a DOS vulnerability in the code. This also came with a warning to upgrade to the version as soon as possible so as to not leave the vulnerability exploitable. The bug can be exploited by miners sending duplicate inputs and is said to be able to crash various implementations. Due to Litecoin and Bitcoin utilizing similar code for their implementation, the bug was found on certain implementations for the Bitcoin blockchain as well. The bug will reportedly cause Litecoin Core to crash when attempting to validate a block containing a transaction that attempted to send the same input twice. These blocks will be rendered invalid and can only be created by miners who are willing to lose the income from the said block as miners would not continue to mine blocks if the reward for the block is not given. The update also came with a note that notified users that pre-0.16 versions are not compatible with wallets created post-0.16. However, the existing wallets that were already created prior to the update will not be affected. The team clarified that the update is also compatible with the Linux kernel, Mac OS 10.8, and Windows versions after Vista. The release must be also verified with the GPG key that is provided along with the release. This ensures that the download file has not been tampered with. If you do not use a larger cryptocurrency, you know, they have like different platforms or different desktop wallets where they incorporate many different types of coins. If you are still using a uh, Litecoin Core, one that comes from directly from the company, but maybe from their website, I haven't been on the Litecoin website in quite some time, then you have to update or you risk potentially losing your money or something happening to your funds. This was also in the news yesterday. I didn't cover it because we get sometimes news about things like this happening and this the same exact thing happened to bitcoin yesterday it was a big flurry everybody was all up in arms apparently what was going around was is that people said that they found a bug the same exact bug that they found inside of litecoin that could allow people to double spend and they said that the problem with this was is that not only uh typically the idea is, is that if you're performing a 51 percent on tack uh, on tack attack on bitcoin you need billions of dollars and computing power in order to be able to do so this bug apparently if you only had eighty thousand us dollars you would have been able to double spend on the bitcoin network which would have been detrimental to the uh, internal value of bitcoin as 21 million and all the other things that all these other people say the point is the bitcoin core developers came forward and said uh the bug wasn't as serious as people made it seem but they did patch it up litecoin said that they did now also patch it up as well so apparently any bug that was out there it was it was very sensationalized it was very odd i'm pretty sure you may have seen some type of bitcoin news or something about it at some point talking about like a bitcoin hack or potential bitcoin hack is what was bitcoin hacked nothing was hacked they found a bug there are bugs in every single one of these things uh these codes are not perfect and probably will never be perfect uh, so they do find bugs all the time, but these have been patched up. So at the moment, at least, there is no need to worry about something detrimental happening to Bitcoin or Litecoin's code or core or blockchain or anything of the sort. Next up. Several large Russian banks have expressed their strong interest in working with the industry of cryptocurrency and blockchain during a closed door meeting held at the Moscow Exchange. This was told by sources from the Russian news site RBC on the 19th of September. As an unnamed, because they're always unnamed, source familiar with the matter told RBC, the demand for cryptocurrencies in Russia is very high. 
but the banks are not able to meet it due to the lack of clearly defined regulations. Because of that, the representatives of the Russian banks present at the meeting have talked to regulators from Japan, Luxembourg, and Singapore to adapt their experience to local realities. Moreover, a lobby group has been formed with the goal of approaching the Russian government with suggestions on how to regulate crypto in the country. As an RBC correspondent has learned, an executive from an unnamed, once again, large Russian bank has proposed to create an alternative bill of digital assets, which will be drastically different from the current one proposed by the government. According to the RBC's report, the private round table has been organized by a lobby group, which includes Russia's largest bank, Sberbank, Alpha Bank, VTB, and others. The lobby group has also discussed regulatory issues with global experts, such as officials from a Japanese crypto exchange, Bitflyer, Singapore-based blockchain platform, NEM, and cryptocurrency, Litecoin. Ex-Minister of Finance, Luxembourg, Luke Frieden, also took part in the meeting, explaining how his country has managed to build a legal framework from cryptocurrencies and become one of the leading financial hubs. It appears, like I said before, other countries are starting to take notice because they realize that other countries are moving a lot quicker than they are. And when you realize that other banks and other institutions and other cryptocurrency places and all these other things are opening up and everyone else is getting into cryptocurrency except for you because you thought it was a farce, you thought it wasn't real, you thought that this was never going to go anywhere. If you were listening over the last couple of months, we've had a lot of news from Russia and it's been very, not even 50-50. It's just kind of been all over the place. We've had news reports that Putin wanted to ban crypto. We had reports that he didn't want to ban it and that he wanted to work with the Ethereum team. We also had news that the government uh, wanted to work with crypto, but then they decided against it. The central bank said that they should definitely get into it, but then they didn't want normal people to get into it. We also had another law that said that normal people, everyday people, were not allowed to get into the cryptocurrency space. And then they changed that and said that normal people could get into the cryptocurrency space. You could uh, buy and sell, trade and hold crypto. But I think you could know no more than like 3,800. It was a very weird number because it was in rubles converted to the U.S. dollar, like $3,800 per year, something like that. And then there was another thing that said if you are very, very rich in the, in the country and you are in, you know, if you're wealthy, you can do whatever you want. With cryptocurrencies, you can hold as much as you want. The problem is right now, none of that was clear. This was all said by random people. There's been a, multiple things that have been proposed and drafted up. And they, like many other countries who I will not name, have taken their time and they're slowly understanding that there's so much money to be made in this. And you have wasted an entire year knocking everything around, not really making much sense. Uh, and this is why this is the same exact thing that happened with India, where they sent uh, representatives around the world because they're trying to figure out a way if, if they're doing it properly. How can I do it properly? One of the main issues that I'm going to say is that Russia, like China, is uh, keen to be in control of all their finances and everything that happens within the country. I'm going to assume that they're going to try and take a very a lax reproach, reproach, approach, if you will, but it probably won't be the best thing. I'm going to think, me, myself, that I'm going to say about 10 to 15 different countries around the world are going to think that they're giving proper regulations or that they're giving something that will uh, heavily benefit them but also still, you know, appease these small people in order to be able to get into the cryptocurrency space. But these rules are not going to work out because what's going to end up happening is, as many other analysts and other professionals in the cryptocurrency space have noted, that eventually governments are going to try and control cryptocurrencies. But once everyone has, without another way of really figuring out how to say this, once everyone has had a taste, that they're going to start wanting more. So when you start allowing people to be able to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies and then your local currency starts going through hyperinflation or normal inflation and people realize that they are losing money, but their money that they put into cryptocurrencies five years ago is still rising in value compared to the paper currencies that they could have put their own money in, this is going to cause a huge shift. As of now, we don't really know exactly when this is going to happen. I'm going to assume... If they aren't working on it right now, by the early 2019 months, we're definitely going to have some type of news from Russia uh, pertaining to, you know, exactly how crypto works, what it is, who can touch it, how much they can have of it. Uh, but this is going to, at least for me, the way that I've been looking at it, when you flip flop so much and you know the history of certain countries and you see how much control that they're trying to maintain over their current systems, 
Uh, this is probably not going to work out too well, but once again, I am not a financial expert, and that is just my opinion that is floating around in my head. Once again, don't listen to me. I don't know anything. I just read from articles, and I'm just a random person who is into cryptocurrencies. That's all I got to say about that. Much to be expected. The SEC is once in the news. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, has once again delayed its decision on the Van Eck Solid X backed exchange traded fund or Bitcoin ETF. The SEC has already received 1,400 letters of comment regarding the Van Eck Solid X Bitcoin ETF proposal. The commission is seeking more input from the public according to a September 20th filing from the SEC. Despite the thousands of comments, the SEC feels it has not reached any conclusions with respect to any of the issues involved. The release outlines the commission's hopes of acquiring comments that answer. It reads, what are the comments views of the exchange asser assertions that Bitcoin is arguably less susceptible to manipulation than any other commodities that underlie ETPs? That's the geographically, my gosh, these words, diverse and continuous nature of Bitcoin's trading markets makes it difficult and prohibitively costly to manipulate the price of Bitcoin. That trading on inside information regarding Bitcoin is unlikely. That the fragmentation across Bitcoin markets, the relatively slow speed of transactions and the capital necessary to maintain a significant presence of each trading platform under making manipulation of Bitcoin prices through continuous trading, blah, 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 blah. What is happening here is, at least according to some experts and even people within the SEC, is that the SEC is consistently overreaching or overstepping their boundaries. The SEC thinks that they can control Bitcoin or that they have a say in how Bitcoin moves. And if Bitcoin is not doing what they want it to do, then they are going to continue to reject ETFs because they do not fit in the line of what the SEC is looking for. We also had news a couple of weeks ago that the SEC has been rejecting any type of ETFs that have tried to be proposed by a number of people who have gone to see them or have walked into their office because they do not look like people who the SEC has been used to doing business with. I'm going to assume many of them are probably, if not millennials, they are maybe just normal tech people who are trying to get things pushed forward. But because the SEC does not like that the way that they look or the way that they talk or the SEC feels that they have uh, not been uh, courted properly, I think that's the nicest way of saying that, they have been rejecting the ETFs. Meanwhile, Van Eck director Gabor Gurbax also commented on the delay, emphasizing that he's very impressed by the numerous positive comments received so far. He tweeted, I am humbled and impressed by the public support of the Van Eck Solid X initiative to bring to the market a well-constructed liquid physical insured Bitcoin ETF. 1,400 plus comments, 99% plus in favor. The public has spoken. Bitcoin is compatible with the U.S. and global capital markets. And quote, for those of you who do not remember, this is actually all of your work. Remember, um, I made two separate, uh, not complete videos, but like the, you know, a portion of the video where I was talking about this actual thing that was going to go through. And the public was actually allowed to uh, give their feelings or how they felt about the approval of a Bitcoin ETF from the Van Eck Solid X organization, bank, whatever you want to kind of call them. And uh, initially, I think they had this thing up for like about two or three weeks. And I think they had three comments on the website. And after I told you guys that you could actually do this, this number right here is probably all of you guys. And that's not even a joke. Uh, it shows what we can do. But the fact still remains that um, I can't say anything slanderous. Uh, people are going to do what they think is correct, even when it is not correct. Uh, we will eventually at some point have a uh, physical Bitcoin ETF. No one knows when it is going to happen. You may have noticed, uh, we also had news a couple of weeks ago. Who is the, who is the person who said that they think uh, that we, we won't get a Bitcoin ETF until sometime around 2019? And another person who also stated that the SEC is doing what they're doing to try and uh, assert their dominance, uh, to show that they can reject it. But I, it's it's so, I think it's so... I'm going to say it this way. We have organizations and companies and institutions and other offices or whatever you want to call them who are so used to being in control that they are going so far as to reject something. Like the, the Bitcoin ETF doesn't really actually matter. Like it's just something that'll help legitimize Bitcoin. 
but it's not Bitcoin. Like the Bitcoin ETF, like if we have them rejected for years, like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are still going to grow and expand, especially in other countries. The fact that they think that delaying this is in some way like them flexing their muscles to show the rest of the world that they have control over Bitcoin. It's, it's, I think it's so, you, you, you have to see what I'm saying as well. Like how interesting is it that you're so obsessed with being in control that you continue to reject things that other people in the SEC have, have come forward stating, why are you rejecting this? There's no need to actually reject this for any reason. They continue to do it thinking that they have some type of control over the price of Bitcoin and that they are in their own way controlling or manipulating Bitcoin or pushing the price down or keeping it stable where they want to be. The, Bitcoin doesn't really care. Not that Bitcoin is, you know, some AI program, but the, the market as a whole, we've seen other countries. W what was it? It was some Nordic country a couple of weeks ago who announced that, you know, the U.S. doesn't have ETFs. Well, we have ETNs and they opened it up to U.S. investors by allowing it uh, to, to be denominated in the U.S. dollar. And then the SEC had to come in. Like, this was four or five days ago. They came in and decided to like um, restrict Americans for, I think, two weeks or something like that from using the ETN because they were like, oh, it, this is causing market confusion. The only confusion is that you're taking forever. I don't understand why older institutions think that things have to take years. Like how much further ahead the world would be progressively as even monetarily, how much easier things could be if organizations and companies just didn't take their time like they they know exactly what they're going to do they, they know exactly at some point they're going to be if they don't want to do it they're going to be forced to do it because other companies and institutions will start to do them denominate them in u.s dollars and all the money that could have been spent within the u.s is going to simply flow to another country it's really remarkable if you pay attention to the like this mini power struggle that they think is going on Bitcoin just isn't located in the U.S. This is now a global thing. It's not something that is only on U.S. shores and everyone is just, you know, dying for 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 the SEC's information as to exactly what's going to happen with the Bitcoin ETF. Like, realistically, like people have stopped caring a long time ago. Like, this is important. Like, we definitely. Oh, wow. That's you know, it's cool. Like the price will definitely increase when we have news that we finally have a, a Bitcoin physical ETF. But I told you guys before, fear and, and stuff like that only lasts for so long. This is why. We've had a lot of negative news over the last couple of days, but you realize prices have still been increasing in the market because at a certain point, people just stop caring. Like people are like, okay, whatever. Like you can kind of do what you want, but I'm here to still make money. I find it all very fascinating that so many other countries, so many other things, they think they think that they're doing something by slowing down the progress of the cryptocurrency space, by not giving proper rules, by not giving proper regulations, by not pro properly telling everyone exactly what's going on. This is why we have major Russian banks who are now like suddenly interested in getting into cryptocurrencies because I'm pretty sure that they realize that people within their country already buying and selling and trading cryptocurrencies over the internet because that's how the internet works. It works worldwide. It's not just happening within their country. They're so used to this old world feel as if we're still in the 1950s and 1960s. I, 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 I don't know if you guys realized a couple of uh, weeks ago, there was news that some old banking institution, I can't remember what it was, that um, they, they already don't really even use SWIFT, but they were talking about how they're going to try and, uh, you know, we're going to have uh, um, soon instant payments and so and so. And, and I sat there and I was like, it's really interesting that, to note that all these banks and stuff are now coming forward talking about that they're getting into the instant payment game. And, you know, um, you, you, you'll you be able to send uh, bank transfers on Saturday and Sunday and you'll be able to do this. Uh, um, You know, it'll only take, you know, a couple of minutes to be able to, to transfer stuff like that. And I'm like, would you have gotten into that if, if Ripple wasn't a thing? Like if XRP hadn't come forward and been like, hey, we're going to take you guys over and make things a lot quicker and then show other people like this only takes three seconds to send. It, it's very, it, you know, everyone is so stuck in their ways. But I, I guess it's the same exact thing when it came to the Internet and also the television and also the radio. Everything takes time, but it shouldn't have to just do it like the Bitcoin world isn't going to completely overrun the, the entire universe simply because we have regulations or someone has approved the Bitcoin ETF. It's really insane how long this is taking for every single thing. I know I sound frustrated. It's, it's more like I just had tea or something like that and I'm just kind of hyped up. The point is, it's, you know, progress doesn't have to be this slow. We could live in a completely different world by the end of 2019 if governments want us to, the only issue is, is that the world is going to continue moving forward, whether they want it to or not. And even if it doesn't happen by the end of 2019, it's going to happen by the 2023 with or without them. So it's kind of like, just get to it. Uh, all of the rejections over four years, it doesn't take four years to read through a stack of 10 pages. Like 
And if, if everyone keeps, you know, giving in the same exact pages over and over with like a, a revision that you said had to be in there before and it's constantly reviving, you continue to find a new way to reject it, especially after 1400 people that we even know of. That's not, that's, I think these are people who are actually sending in uh, the things like that I was telling you guys about. There were also other ways to contact them as well. That's not even physical mail. That's not even uh, through actual normal email and all, all the other things that were actually on their website as well that you could actually post and it was like a little Facebook wall type thing. It was kind of weird. The point is, uh, this is going to happen with or without them. I don't know if they understand that or if they are just trying to play hardball. Uh, but regardless, the market is going to move on at a certain point. Bitcoin is going to continue. The miners have to continue making money. Everyone else wants to continue making money. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the game is, but uh, they, I mean, uh, you will become irrelevant relatively soon if you don't play ball. That's, I, I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. Next up, my actual goodness. The Financial Action Task Force, or the FATF, said it is getting closer to the establishment of a global set of anti-money laundering or AML standards for cryptocurrencies. This was reported by the Financial Times on the 19th of September. The FATF is an international organization established in 1989 at the initiative of the G7 in order to develop policies and standards to fight money laundering. The agency's scope of activities further expanded to combat terrorism financing. The FATF currently comprises 35 member jurisdictions and two regional operations organizations. The agency's president, Marshall Billingslea, reportedly said that he expects the coordination of a series of standards that will close gaps in global anti-money laundering standards at an FATF plenary in October. We are not too far from October right now. At that time, the FATF will purportedly discuss which existing standards should be adapted to digital currencies as well as revise the assessment methods of how countries implement those standards. Billingslea outlined the importance of developing standards that can be applied in a uniform manner. According to Billingslea, current AML standards and regimes for cryptocurrencies are very much a patchwork quilt of spotty processes which is creating significant vulnerabilities for both national and international financial systems. Billings Leah noted that the, despite the risks related to this kind of assets, digital currencies as an asset class presents a great opportunity. Not going to really read anymore. We were quoted many other times by a lot of other people that September, October would be the time when we finally started having some type of clarity as to exactly what's going on in the world. Uh, a couple of things. One, the countries that we've been hearing from, if you notice, I think we've heard at least nine different countries over the last week who have been giving us information about what they plan on doing and how they plan on dealing with cryptocurrencies or that they're desperately trying to get some type of framework put together. The second thing is I am interested, me, myself, in how they're going to establish uh, global anti-money laundering standards because while a lot of people think that crypto is or relies heavily on exchanges. Within the next couple of years, we are going to have some very large decentralized exchanges, which people are going to be using and putting their money on and trading coins back and forth. Along with that, we're going to eventually have atomic swaps. And on top of that as well, when people send each other money through Zcash or Monero or Dash or any other cryptocurrency, maybe, for what it's worth, give or take, pseudo-anonymous, uh, these also can't relatively be tracked. And one of the main issues is, is that when you look at anti-money laundering laws or KYC laws, know your customer laws, it comes down to banks because for the last couple hundred or so years, let's say even a hundred years, what's happened is if you needed to send money to someone, you either wrote a check, which then had to be verified by a bank. You had to send money, which had to be verified by a bank. If you were walking down the street with, let's say a million dollars in a plastic bag or a clear plastic bag or anything else or whatever, and you tried to give it to someone else. This typically wouldn't work because money is very heavy, especially if you're trying to take a train or a plane or an automobile or what, you know, let's say a, a plane. Uh, so what we have is, is a world that's developing. This is why they said it's very patchy because I'm trying, I think the, the head scratcher here is that they're trying to figure it out and I want to see what they're going to try and do to address it because realistically you can't stop someone from sending $3 million worth of Bitcoin or Zcash, or Ethereum to a friend. If you're in Thailand and you try to send it to someone living in Brooklyn, New York, no one can stop you. There's no intermediary anymore. So I think the anti-money laundering uh, KYC, know your customer laws are going to come down to uh, banks, once again. 
and it's going to come down to exchanges. But once again, I still wonder how they're going to try and put the lid on uh, the decentralized exchanges because they are being developed. Uh, we also had the one, what, what was it, EOS Finex, which is going to be uh, developed as well. And was going to, we're going to eventually get to a point where decentralized, where we're only using decentralized exchanges, where you won't really have a need for exchanges at all. Because one of the main reasons for an exchange is uh, pretty much, you know, you can exchange back and forth. But when we have atomic swaps, those won't also be needed. So we'll be able to do that directly on our phone or any type of mobile device, or even on our computer that we already have. And also a lot of countries around the world are already having cryptocurrency ATMs which I know a couple countries are trying to hamper, put a damper on, trying to stop them. But you kind of get what I'm saying. Like, I wonder exactly how they're going to try and do this because the cat is already out of the bag. Like, it's already there. Crypto is already there. It's only going to continue growing. And there's already infrastructure being put in place so that within the next couple of years, two, three years, we won't even have to worry about uh like the old system at all if that makes and it, it, it's all very it's all very interesting and this is this could be one of the reasons why it's taken so long for governments to kind of really get it together because they took so long and not paying attention to it thinking that it was a fad thinking that the stock market was the going to be the thing forever kind of used to the power that they had established or that was already established before they even took office and you you can't really stop it and when when Bitcoin or I was reading something, I don't have it in this article, obviously, it was something about uh, people on Ethereum are working to, uh, gosh, what is it like develop privacy a lot quicker and stuff like that. When we have all of these things put in place and no one can track the transactions, what's going to happen to all of the old laws like they may no longer apply because they are outdated and just don't kind of fit with the model. If you kind of get what I'm saying, it's all very interesting to think about that someone created something nine years ago and it's completely revolutionizing the way that we even think about sending money to each other. Like w having to go through some type of intermediary or something like that. And then we don't have to anymore. Like it's just me and you. It's peer to peer. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, continuing on. Next up, Bitcoin is in the news. According to a recent report by NASDAQ, ComGuard.com Inc. announced that they will be selling their new DataCrypt Bitcoin node on Amazon. This will give the company access to over 310 million active Amazon customers. ComGuard.com is a technology company which aims to design and develop security applications to stop tampering and unauthorized use of computers. Moreover, ComGuard, that name is ridiculous, ComGuard.com aims to standardize the Raspberry Pi development platform with the help of Linux-based software and ARM architecture hardware. They claimed to implement, they claim to have implemented the blockchain software of the Raspberry Pi platform for high-performance solutions at a low cost. Dr. Edward Savarsi, CEO of ComGuard.com, stated that the company had recently developed their expertise in using the Raspberry Pi line, a credit card-sized computer that can function as a normal desktop computer or be used to build smart devices. They also configured a Bitcoin full node on the blockchain that is interesting to keep in mind. He said, the objective is to configure a solution so that the end user will not have to be a computer expert to implement it on the Bitcoin network and deliveries are expected at the end of the calendar fourth quarter of 2018. The quarter four of 2018 starts October 1st. So I guess I'm going to say November, potentially December. Dr. Savarsi op end that it is very important for the Bitcoin network to run on full nodes. This would ensure a secure and decentralized network. He added, if you're a service provider or a volunteer, Raspberry Pi 3 provides a cheap way to access and maintain the full blockchain and contribute to overall security and performance of the network. Without reading any more, as far as I got from this, if I am not mistaken, what it sounds like is that they're selling something um, that is based off of, or that is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, for those who have not seen Raspberry Pi, Google it. it is probably one of the coolest things in the entire world. It's an entire computer that's the size of a card. That's it. It's actually quite amazing. There are a lot of uh, people using it all over the world. They're actually very popular. And this apparently will be able to have a full Bitcoin node inside of it. So as you are running the computer, from what I understand, you will then be running a full Bitcoin node. And I guess this is also where this number comes in. They will have access to 310 million active Amazon customers. So even if we only have, let's say, 1% of that, let's say, no, conservatively, let's say we have 300,000 people over the course of the next two years who end up buying this. That'll be an additional 300,000 people who are running full Bitcoin nodes. 
like I said, as far as I understand, that sounds incredibly cool. No, I haven't seen a price on this. This is not a paid advertisement, by the way. I definitely do not work for comguard.com. The point is, I thought this was very cool. I like the idea of this. I'm actually going to try and keep up with this because I think Raspberry Pis are like, aren't they like $100 or something like that? If this is cheaper than $100, let's say $89.99. I may think about picking one up as like a side computer or something like that because I do like the idea of decentralization and also being being able to run a full Bitcoin node just sounds like something really cool in the first place. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all again for watching. I, If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Friday. My days are kind of blurring together. If it is Friday, I hope you all have a great Friday. Hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's amazing. I hope you have a glorious day. Hope you find money on the street. Thank you once again for watching and or listening, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.